And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation in the game. Uh, we have a full house today. Uh, with us, we have Eric. What's up? We have a Tom. Good evening. Good evening. I'm feeling very still. Yes, Tom is very, very still. So still, <laughs> he's invisible. Invisible still. Uh, we have me, Adam, and we have a special guest, Jake. Jake from State Farm. Thanks for Hello. joining us. Thanks for having me, boys. Hey, anytime. Appreciate it. This is the uh, second course. time we've had Jake on the cast, so you may recognize his voice. A sweet, sweet, sweet voice. Sweet, sultry voice. Sensual. Elegant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've made you uncomfortable, how's everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not too bad not too bad i'm uncomfortable now i, <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't I've... really played much of anything this week it's been sad oh no that's a that's I've an been... oddity for you you're usually the one with like four thousand games on your list i know work this week has just been um challenging let's just say that let's say that <laughs> Yeah, I feel you on that. I was on call, so like the first half of the week was um, a bit of a blur, you can say. Yeah. yeah we've had a, a couple. We've had a couple team members out, so we've been trying to fill in, and it's just uh, like you, you know when you work with those people who are so goddamn good at their job that like they do ten times the amount of work anyone else does, <laughs> and then when they leave, you have to somehow cover that. Oh, no. yikes. That's awful. Yeah. Yikes. Can you yeah. imagine? That sucks. And they just left? Well, no, I mean they they took off for oh. a totally, okay, okay. totally reasonable like family <laughs> reasons, like have to go deal with something. So it's not like anything bad. Gotcha. Um, okay. But it's just one of those things of, oh hey, you know, Bill's not here. Now we have to you know, try to try to get Bill's workload spread across the rest of the team and build as a work of like seven people. So fuck. <laughs> yeah. That, that makes yeah. it a little, uh, a little um, difficult to say the yeah. least. Damn it, Bill. Oh, How hey, dare I just you. Let that happen. Stop being so fucking productive, Bill. <laughs> Be unproductive. <laughs> just pay him more. Uh, not damn going it, Bill. Why are you making money? Stop, stop yeah. making money. I really felt like at uh, one of my old employers, that's how it went. Like as you moved up and got higher, better positions, it seems that you were doing less and less work. It was I a mean, really weird situation. Yeah. <laughs> With power comes I like luxury, that. I guess, sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. No, it was, it I was mean, bizarre. You would do less work, right? But I'm sure that their job was more, there were more stakes in his job going poorly, all right? Uh, kind of. I mean, I like they're more, they have more responsibility overall. Uh, like they might be sure. doing less work, but that, um, but they're like probably they're not doing anything work. tedious. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They, so a it was a situation where yeah. they, they were over a lot more, but there were some that had no fucking clue what they were over. Um, it was almost like the idea of a <laughs> professor that can't get fired. That's what these positions felt like. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people I, I feel like a lot of the people I, I work with like can't that. get fired either. Dude, okay. So I had seen one person get fired ever, and it sounded like he was doing some shady like access to data kind of shit. Oh yeah. Oh no. <laughs> so I mean, other than that, like I've never seen someone get fired from there. And I've seen someone <laughs> flip social security numbers and send out the wrong social security numbers to the wrong people. <laughs> wow! <laughs> like we're God, talking so lots of people, is... and there, he didn't get fired. Great. There are some. Like... There's some numbers right. you can share. That is not one of those numbers. <laughs> that is, like, not, that is number. not an acceptable <laughs> ex mistake. <laughs> That's I remember trying to. I'm trying to, I'm trying to refrain from going day. on a on a security rant about social security numbers, their intended use, and the historical misuse of them that has currently landed in this quagmire of privacy shenanigans. But I won't. <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> but you won't. 
But no, that was a long ass day fixing that mess. He didn't get fired. He was even a contractor. So you have to really fuck up oh. to get fired from there. Like contractors typically get fired if they look at someone wrong. They're wow. uh, at, at one of my old companies. This is this is not my current company for the record. There was a guy who made literally a, a $2 million mistake because he didn't do his job. And it caused $2 million worth of damages in an hour, which was great. Oh, my God. Um, Can you imagine? It, was, get it was fantastic. Uh, no, of course not. Oh, no. my they actually God. Fired, they fired my buddy who I was working with who had written most of the automation around these systems designed to prevent those mistakes. And they kept in the other guy because... The other guy had senior in his title, even though he was literally the dumbest man I've ever worked with. Oh, I hate that shit. <laughs> it was, oh man, it was great. How do you make a two, it, over a $2 million mistake and not get oh, fired for it? I just can't imagine that. Well, so like one part of it was the system, because if you didn't like add this thing, it applied to everything. Uh -huh. So it just said, oh, you, you didn't make a filter here. We're just going to apply it to everything. Uh, oh. Instead of like the normal behavior of, oh, hey, you didn't fill out this field. You might want to. Like the so, annoying uh, ass like, red boxes that make you do shit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so he, he didn't do his job and didn't fill in this thing that he was supposed to. And uh, yeah. Your buddy got fired for down it. Down the drain. Yep. Mm, because that makes sense. Yeah. It does. <laughs> anyway. That was a weird tangent. How was y'all's week? Tangent. Other than Tom and I, <laughs> um, my I had a good week. Car got slammed by a shopping uh, cart. I'm, oh, <laughs> dude, those pictures that look brutal. Thing. Yeah, I was like, it looks like it got hit by a car. Like that shopping yeah, cart yeah. must have been flying down the parking lot. Was it the full? Fact, the he said cart? he said it was empty. That's. It must have been rolling but, down there, man. Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the parking lot was on a pretty, like, it was on a decent incline, and I was parked way at the bottom of the incline. So Were there probably... any, was there anything that it could have hit on the way there? Um, I don't know where, I don't know where the open. dude, yeah, I don't know where the dude, like, where is, um, where he lost control of the cart or whatever, so I don't know where the cart came from. I just saw where it went. <laughs> he was uh, piloting an aircraft above your car. Yeah, <laughs> dropped and he cart. swooped down and dropped but, his insurance information. <laughs> no, but the dude was really cool. This is an older guy. He's retired. He he came inside and told me about it. He gave me his insurance stuff, and uh, I'm still trying to get that all worked out because his his auto insurance won't cover it because he wasn't driving his car. So they he, they think maybe his homeowner's insurance would cover that, which is kind of weird, but. What? Yeah, that's what he. Okay. That's what they said. So either either way, um, the guy called me, um, and he's like, "If if the other insurance doesn't cover it, I'm just gonna pay your deductible, or like I'll I'll pay for the Shit. the repairs or whatever." Like, he was really cool about it and said, "You know, obviously, it's got to get fixed, and it's on him and not me." So. I feel so like I I feel like I hit the holy dude. grail of like <laughs> yeah, car accident damage stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what a nice I'm guy. Very, I was about very to grateful ask, for that. Uh, did you ever figure out what's wrong with this man? <laughs> no, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> He's not from America. <laughs> He's from, I don't know, yeah. man. Like, did you, did a Canadian mess up your car? I, like, what happened, just like a, <laughs> He's just like a nice old man. Like, he's the kind of, the kind of guy that when he called me to tell me that he would, you know, if the insurance wouldn't cover it, that he would fix it or whatever. Like he's the kind of guy that would just make conversation. He asked me if I was married and like <laughs> one of those type of dudes, like just a nice oh, homey man. old person. Like you're going to find yourself in his will, like part of a Disney channel, original movie where you like inherit his mansion or something. Like he's an <laughs> old oil baron. <laughs> Says that much money to give away walking. some yeah. random guy hit yeah. with a shopping cart. <laughs> it's basically a blank check, but with a 30 year old man. Sort of yeah. like, wow. I, so, I can um, just tell, like, yeah, repping, when, like, whenever I meet up with this guy for him to give me, like, the check for the deposit uh, or for my insurance deductible or whatever, like, it's not going to be a quick exchange. I'm going to have to sit there and talk to that guy for like 15 or 20 minutes, which is <laughs> you fine. You guys are going to get But he's just like, somewhere. he's just like that kind of guy. <laughs> just the real talkative. Uh, yeah, I feel yeah, friendly kind of person. 
Fantastic. So you've worked at a location where this kind of stuff has been possible for a long time. Yeah. Is this your first run-in? I mean, I've I've got little dings on my car from whatever in the parking lot, just like tiny little things, but never anything that required any sort of like repair Body or work. yeah. I don't know if you all remember just like this. annoyances. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember this. You and I were on site together. I came out to my car and there was an old Christmas card torn in half with this cursive writing that was unreadable with a um, look like a policy number on it. <laughs> We're like, what the fuck happened? She had backed into my car and bumped my bumper off. Oh my God. So she left her insurance information on my car under my windshield wiper. But it was, an, it was my old shadow. Or Dodge Shadow. So I literally just picked up the bumper and put it back in the clip. <laughs> everything was fine. That's amazing. I do yeah, remember so you that. Can't now really that you can't really damage it. a Dodge Shadow. Like she probably had more damage to her own car. <laughs> but no, it was in a similar vein though, where I felt like, oh, this lady tried. I mean, granted, she made it almost impossible to read, but she tried <laughs> to give me a, their information. And you or, know, it's a grandma because it's one of those Christmas cards. Oh, but no, it, it makes me think for sure it was a grandma because it was one of those Christmas cards where there's no writing in them and you have to write everything yourself. Oh, oh, yeah. Why does that make it a grandma thing? I do that for people in Christmas. Yeah. Oh, you guys are nice. Even if it has a message. Grandma cards. It, it's just a lot. I don't want to say easier, but like instead of having to pick out a bunch of cards to specialize each person or whatever, like just buy a pack of a variety of blank cards in the middle and then just write something nice for people. Yep. Uh, I'm weird. It's more personal I, that way too. It's more personal, but there's not a lot of I mean it's weird because there's a lot of people I really like and spend time with, but I can't always make it personal. Yeah. I feel you. That's true. You can make it seem personal. Speaking of, know. where's my birthday card, Irk? I am in love okay. with you you know how I am with birthdays, Tom, so fuck off. <laughs> you did nothing to get bored. Your mother did the work. I'll send her a card. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that actually yeah that's any actually send renee a card she's been putting up with me so no no like at your funeral i'll give her a celebration card <laughs> okay the wow. burden has been congrats lifted. for your loss <laughs> <laughs> do they make those cards is that a card they there's got to be a company that makes like negative Bad. cards <laughs> oh i fucked that up but no that would be fucking great if there's a card like that but no um I don't know where I was going with that, but it's a thing. Huh. <laughs> so, Vigi Games. Vigi Games. Vigi Games? Vigi Games. You guys been uh, Let's talk about some... Vaporwave Spider Man. What? Vaporwave Spider Man? Yeah. What, exactly. what is it? the Spider Verse? <laughs> so, uh, no, no. Vaporwave Spider Man. So, uh, there's this game that was in uh, one of the hum Humble Monthly Bundle things. Uh, that I picked up called Verlet Swing. It's all like pastel pinks and purples and like busts and like Roman architecture. And you have you've got a grapple hook and you swing and listen to vaporwave music and try to hit like a goal ring. That's the game. Huh. That's the game. <laughs> it was that's the whole thing. thing. Was, that's, <laughs> that's it, huh? huh? Sounds super chill. <laughs> you know. Uh, it actually is like I really, really enjoyed it because like I was I was coming off of playing something a little, little hotter than that, some mm -hmm. some Team Fortress Two, and oh uh, I needed something that was not the clusterfuck that was TF Two. So I lived up for Let's Swing, and yeah, I just vibed out listening to to trippy vaporwave music, being Spider Man inside of some randomly generated levels or what seemed like randomly generated levels, and it was cool. Neat. That's it. Yeah. Nice. I um I did I did some fall guys. Fall guys. I love fall guys. Did you fall? Yeah. Did you fall? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I fell twice, a lot. Maybe. Um I you think a lot this of is wins worth though, calling. don't you? Um yeah, a decent amount. I think I'm sitting at seven or eight right now. Damn. Bird, I think he said he's at like fourteen. Oh my Ooh, god. I'm sorry. I'm fall guys seems like birds. Shit. Burbs game like a hundred percent. It does, yeah. yeah I can yeah. see that. Perfect for, sure. for him. Um, but 
I want to call out. They did something I really enjoyed. So, obviously, we're playing Rocket League. Everyone here is familiar with the Rocket League esports or Rocket League store in general. So, you have like the featured items on top and the smaller ones on the bottom. And everyone gets the same things. The first couple of days of Fall Guy, it was the same thing. They have pivoted to where your featured items, everyone's the same. Bottom items are not the same for everyone anymore, mm. which is really cool. Because what was happening the first two days, everyone looked the same. Because everyone had the <laughs> same fucking items. Yeah. Now you're seeing stuff that you're like, holy shit, that's a thing? Because someone else had it in their store. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Like I saw a fucking woolly mammoth and I'm like, I need this. Because it looks so good. <laughs> I know I um, as much as I want to. Save so you, you've got a couple dubs, haven't you? I've got one. And I've been so close so many times, but just can't quite get the win. I always the get game, the tail one at the end, and I can't I can't do the tails, man. I can't do the, it. The, the tails are brutal, especially because really what really is. sucks is when you get into a spot where it's a clusterfuck, because then you don't know who's going to come out with it. What's yeah. the tail? Yep. How's Everyone's the tail one work? Grab. So for the final knockout, um, there'll be one tail. And there'll be like four or five, maybe six people. And the goal is to be the one at the end with the tail. If you grab someone who has the tail, you take the tail from them. Most oh, of the time. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mo yeah, I think that's a Not good every time. At least for me. So, yeah, I mean, I've had some of that issue too. And I think that is the game. Uh, every once in a while with Hexagon, but the tail grab is definitely the game that shows that their neck code can do some work. Mm. Because like all of a sudden you'll have someone that looks like they're four or five lengths behind you and they get your tail. And you you know on their screen Ooh. they were right on you. But yeah, on your screen they were not close. Desync. Exactly. Yeah. And I've seen it with Hexagon where I'm like, oh, I'm going to be a dick and cut this guy off. And I cut off the Hexagons in front of him and he's like three Hexagons back. I'm like, he's dead. Next thing I know, he's in front of me, and I'm falling. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, it does have some issues on that that I hope that eventually they'll take care of. They're not awful. Given what the game is, I think it's fine. But there's it just rears its head every once in a while. It's a little frustrating. But So my, my main question is that with issues like this, which aren't super critical in the game that it is today... Do you ever think we're going to see a Fall Guys eSport, like several million dollar tournaments <laughs> I, based on this? Property? I hope so. I really do. I it would be so. funny, but I don't, I don't see that happening. I think it'd be just like, I there's want, no... I want them to make a super serious, like, eSport out of this. Like, rent out a key arena or what was key arena. Like, go full Dota 2 with this thing. It would be cool, for sure, to see a yes, game that's just like a party game get that much funding to do something like that <laughs> well and on this game i mean what I'm there's an inherent absurdity bit. like taking a, a fun party game that seriously mm. and there, i mean there's some levels like fruit shoot where they launch fruit at you randomly and you just have to kind of dodge it but other than that it's not a lot of rng in all mm. honesty it's there's not a whole lot of rng that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You you can get good at Fall Guys, 100. percent You can kind of learn the quirks of each level and like how to so maneuver what, around people. Yeah. But. Figure out the skips and shit like that. So while we joke about it being an esport, God, that'd be awesome to see an actual competitive scene just to see what it would look like. <laughs> yeah. Why yeah. not try it out? Honestly, just do it. I'm hereby announcing my retirement from Rocket League, <laughs> and now I a Fall Guys main. Well, if that's the case, you might be able to get some uh, NHL garb if they have their say in it. Uh -oh. That's right. I'm going to segue to that news item <laughs> since, you know, we're here. Um, so the NHL teams and, of course, KFC have already KFC. sketched up what of course, their skins KFC. for Fall Guys would look like. Oh, I saw that. Yep. <laughs> and Colonel Sanders looks awesome. I fucking mm -hmm. want it. <laughs> I would fucking love a Colonel Sanders Fall Guy cosmetic. I know, wouldn't we all? I mean, I would. That would be great because I would pull out the cosplay we had of Colonel Sanders to play as Colonel Sanders in Fall Guy. Yeah, you have a cosplay of Colonel. Oh wait, I remember that. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. 
That'd be awesome. That's That'd be right. We played. Stream. We played fucking KFC <laughs> dating simulator. That game was awful. <laughs> Honestly, I had, I had, I had a lot of I, I had a lot of fun for Quite the first literally. fifteen minutes, and then I was kind of sick of the whole thing. Quite literally, the best dating simulator I've ever played, because I don't like them. I think I would have hated it had we not been playing it as a group. But playing it as a group, we could laugh at the absurdity yeah, together, yeah. which yeah. makes it more enjoyable. Yeah. Because, dear God, it was absurd. Everything's better with yeah. a group. Yes. Anything. Plays. Ah. Uh, amputations. <laughs> war <Group> crimes. Amputations. <laughs> war crimes collectively... are the best with friends. <laughs> Tom is the <laughs> ultimate... <laughs> Find the negative and everything. Yeah, nothing. Type of guy. Tom will always be that guy. I love it, dude. Nothing rounds like, oh, out a nice. You have a... <laughs> Tom, the you think you found a universal truth? <laughs> nah, dog. I'll find a way around. <laughs> nothing rounds out this a nice is... Saturday evening like some war crimes with the boys. <laughs> Damn right. Yikes, dude. <laughs> I'm seeing a video game coming for this now. No, I'm. Um... <laughs> Crack okay. open a war crime with the boys. <laughs> a great video game title. Uh, <laughs> uh, what would that game? I don't even want to think about it. Rainbow Six Siege like, when you're playing a smoke. Like you control how fast or slow you're pouring water. <laughs> My God. Nah, uh, nah, nah, uh, let's, no. Sorry. Pass. Pass. <laughs> pass. Hard pass. Continue. Uh, Someone else. It's like a hand simulator game where you're just trying to chop off each other's legs. <laughs> It's like playing that uh, game with the knives in the fingers, where you put the knife between the oh, fingers on the no. gear. You're intentionally putting it on the fingers. Oh my god! I don't know what's we, that called. We've got good game ideas. I don't think we do. <laughs> <laughs> what? You wouldn't enjoy that, Jake? Come on. But no, I I know we'd enjoy it, but it might be that you know, 15 minutes of fun and then you're tired of it type thing. Oh yeah, and then you realize you're a fucking horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Wait, uh, yeah. Just now? Ah, uh, true. You've you've been at that level for a while. Yeah. Ah, uh, but you guys ever? Anyone else been playing anything? Well, I've been. What y'all been doing? Just Ghost Tushima again. Ooh. Okay. We're gonna need Fuck. you to tell us about this game. Yes. So because we're all ignorant. There's a lot of hype around this game, and it's gotten stellar reviews as far as I've seen. And I don't know why I haven't just really looked into the game yet. Like I've I've seen like just little bits of gameplay, but I've not actually watched any, you know, lengthy lengthy bits of it. What's it all about? So the game's about um the Mongol invasion of Japan. Like in the what what year was that? Like forever, forever ago, whenever it was. Long time. In long time ago. And so the first island that they invaded was the island of Tushima. And, you know, the game's about these, at least on this island, there's like lots of different clans, right? And, okay. you know, there's about 80 samurai. And then there's just thousands of Mongols just coming to the beach and they see them coming and they know what they're, you know, they know their intentions. They have done it to areas on the way there. And so the samurai are very like they, you know, if, if you know like the customs of a samurai, they they fight one on one. Like it's like your your strongest guy against our strongest guy, whoever wins gets everything, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like let's not kill thousands of people to get to the end game here for a samurai at least. And these Mongols don't give a shit. They're like <laughs> fuck you. And, you know, just kill everybody they see. Uh, and then what it comes down to is there's like, after the initial battle, there's like no samurai left, like two samurai. And the guy you play as is Jin. And he's one of the last remaining ones. And basically the whole game is the Mongols fight dirty. And the only way to beat the Mongols is to fight dirty as well. Um, so for a samurai, that's really hard to do. So it's like you're you're kind of like the the character Jen is like fighting with his morals of oh, okay. you know do I become 
something that I'm, you know, I can't do this. Like this, it's a, to his uncle, who's the other last remaining samurai. And part of the game is you're trying to save him from uh, King is Khan. One of like the Mongol leader. And, you know, you, you, he wants you to do it honorably, you know, which for samurais, you just walk up to everybody and say, fight me. And you can do that. <laughs> you know, you can <laughs> walk up to everyone and go fight me. And it's like, there's a literally a game mechanic where it's called a standoff. And, you know, it's where um, you're in a 1v1 against a guy. And it wants, like, you have to get the timing right of when he attacks you. And if you get the timing right, you just one shot him. Like, you just slice right through his body. Um, and then another guy will come up to you and you can just do it again. And another guy will come up to you and just do it again and again and again. You just one shot people. <laughs> and eventually you can unlock like stuff that where you do that so much that it scares people and they run away because they're terrified of you. <laughs> um, they're like, oh, fuck That's this. Awesome. I'm out of here. <laughs> um, there's so many things like that. So basically the game is like a moral, like he becomes the first, uh, he becomes the first Shinobi, the first ninja. So oh. he be like, he becomes the ghost of Tushima and everyone calls him the ghost because he doesn't fight like a samurai. He, you know, hides in the bushes and has like poison darts and things like that. And he had to do that because the Mongols fight dirty. So he's like, all right, well, I'm going to do that too. That's essentially what the whole game's about. Okay. And then defeating the Mongols, getting them off your island. So it's, it's effectively like the start of the ninja. Yeah. He's cool. the, he's the first Shinobi. Interesting. So combat wise, like what kind of game would you compare the combat to? Like the way you fight? Um, Especially if you're one shotting, like I don't see. Is so it that's just a very minor game mechanic. There's okay. so much more. Um, so you have what, what people have a gripe with, with the game for the most part with the combat is the fact that there's no lock on to the enemy. There's no lock oh. on at all. And I think that's a, for the game that this is, I think it's a good thing. They didn't need it and it wouldn't work if they did that because uh, Mongols fight dirty most of the time. Like they'll, they'll group on, like group up on you. They'll have five guys swinging at you at the same time. Um, and what, like the game gets really complicated because you have to change stances for the type of enemy that you're fighting against. So like there's a stance for guys with swords, a different one for shields, a different one for spears, a different one for like giant big dudes. Okay. Like brutes type guys. So you like, and it's really easy. Like you can change that stance on the fly and you start to like, you know, with most games, like the more you do it, like you just get better and better and better at it. And you can like kind of spread out the people that you want to kill first or like, you know, throw poison darts at the guy you don't really want to deal with right now type thing. It's, it's really deep and amazing. I love it. So that sounds like, um, at least on the stance thing, it automatically made me go to Neo only sounds like more advanced. Like you have more than just three options. Yeah. Can you, can you like run combos through it? Like you're yeah, starting. There's, there's combos. The Sweet. There's um like, and you unlock those. So there's like lots of different techniques that you can unlock and you just earn points by playing the game and finishing missions and things like that. Right. Um, so like there's a, there's a combo where you like hold triangle and then you do triangle square triangle and that like just destroys someone with the shield. Like you just run right through them. And what I love about it is the combos have like, it's a completely different like animation for the, for your character as well like every combo and there's like probably a dozen for each stance oh wow like different combos you can do uh, are there any combos that link stances like you'll start with a sword one and then end in a shield kind of thing um you can do that like with the shorter combos so like there's pr essentially like a triangle square triangle for every every stance and what you can do is you can do triangle, square, triangle on your sword stance and then, you know, do like on the D-pad. I think it's just whole D-pad, then A to go to your next stance. Mm. And then like this is why the lock on system wouldn't work because you have to just swing over to the next guy who has a different, you know, 
yeah. that you need a different stance for. So if there was a lock on, the only guy you could see on the camera would be the guy that you're locked on to. But with this, you can like kind of you can plan it out in your head and be like, OK, I'm going to beat up this guy with this combo. I'm going to switch to like the the moon stance, beat up this guy with this combo. Then I'm going to swing over to this guy and throw a, you know, throw a fucking kunai at this guy, poison dart at this guy, run away, go in the bushes with this guy. And it's it's great. Like you can do so many different things in the game. It's amazing. All right. And you can like um, you can you will probably play the game completely differently than I did, or some people will, because I just like I played the whole game like a samurai. Like I just walked up to people and like fight me, fight me now. You know? <laughs> um but other sure people that I notice like in Twitch streams and stuff is they like to play it like a ninja. And you can totally do that. Like, just go. You could kill an entire camp of people, and they never see you. Okay, that's good that they that the combat is deep enough that they're giving options to the player and how they want to play instead of being like, "Hey, you have to play this way." Yeah, yeah. Um. So you said like there's definitely a stance that you should use if you're going against a shield, but is it possible to just like not change stance and just fucking beat them because you're good? Um, so if you're using a stance on somebody, like if you're using the wrong stance, essentially, then you can beat them up, but it's just really hard. Like it's just a lot harder. Like you, they'll just okay. block you or they'll parry you because okay. you're, you're faced the wrong way. They're like, okay, dumbass. And then just <laughs> like hit you in your totally wide open area. Um, okay. so it's definitely to your benefit to do that, but you don't have to. It's, right. It just That's, makes the game a lot harder. Yeah, I was making sure because I know like some games, if they had that kind of mechanic where they would say, well, if you're not in this stance, everything gets blocked, everything gets parried. You cannot touch this guy. Until no, you no, you, you definitely still can. Like you're okay. still really good with your sword. Um, but it's just going to take you longer to kill that guy while someone else is coming at you, probably. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like the the game makes you want to change, but you just don't have to. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. The, uh, been... From what I did see of it, that the graphics looked really nice. Like the art direction and everything looked fantastic. Yeah, the game is is beautiful. I it's you know, when because there's no there's no map in the game. Well, there is a map, but there's no like mini map oh, when you're running yeah. around, right? Uh -huh. And the only way you can see where you need to go is with the wind you swipe up on the uh, playstation pad mm -hmm. and the wind like the you know all of this like particle dust and the wind animation and the trees moving kind of shows you where you need to go and that that's, that was so beautiful that's to see cool that. that's cool. and everything around you will just like you know leaves will like swirl around your character and mm -hmm. it'll like kind of push them a little bit like it's you can tell there's so much detail that went into it and in like you can tell that the that Sucker Punch loved this game. They put so much heart into it. And it's really good because of it. So I didn't realize until I was prepping a little for this. So I know you really like Sly Cooper. And you really like this. It's the oh, same hell yeah. Same dev same house. company. Yep. Same uh same dev, Sucker Punch, made my favorite game series ever, Sly Cooper. And like there's that's... there's some aspects of it a little bit, um, like running on running on a tightrope tightrope like Sly does in the games. Mm -hmm. it, it's like it looks just like it. It felt just like it. <laughs> it's kind of cool. And that's that's pretty much it. But you're still like you know you're still sneaking around like you can steal stuff and pit po pickpocket a little bit. You, you can tell that it's the just much more advanced graphics and you, know, <laughs> you tell me it doesn't everything. look like PS2. <laughs> well if if you ask like xqc he hated it he hated the game really uh yeah because he flew through it um because he was trying to beat the story on the first day for his stream oh and it, See, I, I think if you play the game that way it ruins the game in my opinion i think there are some games that are just so much better when you actually immerse yourself into it and put all of your attention into it like to be 
like focused on beating the game in one day while streaming it and talking to chat and stuff like that. Like you're not even fully paying attention to the game. Yeah, he he definitely wasn't. Um, so there's there's three acts in the game. It took me 30 hours to beat Act One because I was doing all of the side stuff along oh. the way, and I didn't even like I was a week into the like playing a few hours every day. Got up to 30 hours, and I'm like, oh, I'm just getting into Act Two. Like <laughs> this is crazy, and there's wow. so many like side missions to do and um like the best missions in the game are besides the story missions are the uh missions where you learn like a really unique technique or you get like a really cool sword like or like a camo for your sword type thing you know what i mean Mm -hmm. also there's Um, different weapons oh yeah there's bow and arrows you have your long kunai you have your short sword you got your long bow, short bow, all of your ghost weapons, which are like, okay. uh, like throwing knives, stuff like that. Poison darts. You can throw a like wind chime to like distract people, things like that. Hold on, hold on. you could throw a wind chime. Yep, there, and you pick like them up from ass. like people's decks. Like you grab a wind chime, <laughs> literally, like it's on, it's sitting on their porch, and you just grab it. Like, use it later I'm to sure kill, like, kill a big dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's like sticky bombs. You just chuck them on somebody, and they're like, "What the fuck?" And then they're just dead. It's there's this game's so detailed, and people don't even notice. Hashtag war crimes with the boys. <laughs> Double war crimes with the Dear boys. God. Did you guys ever play the Tenchu games on PlayStation back in the Hell day? Hell yes, I fucking did. No. Nah. I'm wondering how much, how Tenchu many parallels there are between between Ghost of Tsushima and that, and it, there might not be hardly any. Just not the, many, the, from some what I've of seen. just some of the ways that he's described using, um, like the various elements other than just combat. Tenchu at its heart was a stealth game, and if you got caught at all, there really wasn't much fighting your way out. At least not that's, in the early games. Yeah, that's true. It was it was stealth first and really only. Yeah, I'm, Fair enough. I'm, in, I'm intrigued by this, but what I'm really intrigued by is you said you're on your second run. So what yep. is special about this second run? So the second run is you can essentially play the entire game like it's a classic black and white movie, like a black and white samurai movie. Um, yep. That's fucking cool. With, That's, you know, yeah. the Japanese voice acting, things like that. I don't... It so far it hasn't affected gameplay that I can see. Like the the map looks different a little bit. It looks like a like a worn out map instead of like a really nice UI map, which I kind of dig. It's kind of cool. So they're going matches like full, it a little bit full immersion. Like yeah, no, no it's, UI. It's super full cool. Cinematic. It it's like I'm watching a movie. That's awesome. Isn't there a specific yeah. like director or style of movie that they kind of modeled that after? I'm not sure. I I really yeah. haven't seen that many like ninja movies. Yeah, I haven't either. It's the, it's the super name, cool. I forget what the name of that mode is, but like it's literally that director's name. So yeah, it's it's not so much as a oh we were inspired. It was a oh hey we're gonna make this look exactly yeah, like yeah. this source I think material. You're right. Yep. Which is nothing wrong. I think it's cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Like being able to get that kind of an aesthetic in a game when it actually fits is so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it like, does fit. Like it's so cool. It you're it's a different type of immersion at that point than yeah. did, than the did main they ever game. Fix, did they ever fix the bug with the, um, the dialogue animation? Because I noticed that on your first playthrough, you picked um, the the Japanese voiceovers. But the characters were still using like the English. No, uh, that's that's still there. Yeah, okay. the the mouth animations are still in English. So I mean, you you get over that pretty quick. It was just kind of awkward first time through. Like the English voice acting is amazing. Um, it's really good. Like better, way better than I thought it would be for a game like this that's based on like Japanese customs and things like that. But mm. yeah. 
all the voice acting is great. Amazing. It's just the 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 mouth. You know, you're you're staring at the guy's face and you're like, okay, this doesn't match up at all. So you picked uh subtitled. So they're speaking in Japanese, but they still did the English mouths? Yes. Okay. That's fucking weird, but okay. And in in a way, <laughs> when you're playing in the the old timey classic mode, you don't really notice it. And it kind of it kind of fits that the mouth doesn't really match. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's like old timey, not great quality. It's similar to what you're type thing. Kind of, yeah. Kind of what you're seeing in like the old Godzilla things and stuff like that. Like yeah. I know it's not that vain. I mean like the way the mouth matches. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And the ghosts has a lot of bugs. Like there's a lot of glitches, small glitches. Like, you know, you'll kill a guy and his spear will go into space. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you'll kill another guy and like, he'll just start. It's like, he's on a trampoline and he'll just oh. start bouncing up and oh down. Oh my God. <laughs> and it, like in the, in the ground, things like that. Or like, uh, there's some not very often, but like you'll you'll throw yourself in a corner of a room and your character will just like fall for no reason. Just a falling animation just when you're in a room. And then they even knew that that happens and just have it like fade to black and just put you outside. Oh, it's no. like, wait a second. No. They knew this was happening. I don't know. Um, but anyway, like. It never once broke my immersion at all. Like, I, in a way, it was, like, kind of cute. You know those, like, glitches, like, in Skyrim or something? That's just funny. Yeah. And you're like, all right, yeah. whatever. This is fine. And you know that they can fix it along and make the game better. But it, it never broke any immersion that I have. Like, Ghost of Tsushima is my game of the year right now. It's so good. Yeah, I'm... I've seen the ratings. It looked great. This is a game that somehow I never saw. I never saw this coming. I there was, was so not out of the loop. Yeah, there was not a lot of advertisement with it. Once it released, there was. But before that, no. But they had the the kind of controversial uh, flute presentation at the PlayStation thing, like in 2018. There's this like guy on a flute. Oh, just, right. Yeah, that was for this game. And everyone was like, all right, we got Flute Man out here. We got Flute Man game, <laughs> you know? Yeah, of course, everyone fucking memes the shit out of it. But I'm not. And you can't play the flute. Like, you can just stand there in the game and just play your flute looking out at the ocean. <laughs> oh. uh, you can swipe down on the D pad and bow to people and they'll bow back. Um, Little things like that. They put a lot of little flavor details yeah. in there. Went for full on immersion and they I in my opinion they got it. Oh good. I'm uh, this is something I'll probably pick up at some point. I just don't need to get it at full price, but I will definitely because I mean it's a single player experience too, so. Oh yeah, and you can get this game whenever you want, pay whatever you want for it. I guarantee you'll have fun with it. Uh take your time with it. Play it like an hour or two, however, you know, in your in your free time, if you want to. Definitely yeah, so don't try I, and fly through it. Yeah. Well, and see, that's where I'm, I have issues. Like games like Horizon Zero Dawn, where the story I was super intrigued with, I kept driving through the story because I really wanted to see the story. Yeah. And I'm a f after hearing what you said about that other streamer and stuff, I'm worried that I might end up in a situation where I want to fly through the story because I like the story, and then it. Well, does weird shit to the immersion. Right. Um, in my opinion, this is one of the best written games, like best narratives that I've seen in a while. Like, I don't know what XQC was thinking when he said the story wasn't good. <laughs> I don't know where he got that from because it was great. <laughs> It's like he got it from his chat. He probably just they were the ones watching. Pretty, yeah. pretty much. Like, it, I, like I think it was the cool thing for him to just bash the game, yeah. and his chat was like, "Yeah, fuck this game. To That's be stupid." Contrarian. Yeah, and I, I, I watched um, him play it because I was debating on even getting the game, just like you guys. Oh wow! 
and I was, you know, trying to watch his stream to see like, all right, what does he think of it? I watched 15 minutes of it and he's like, this game's fucking bullshit. And I'm like, ah, uh, that sucks. All right, maybe I won't pick it up. And then I go over to Lyric. If you guys know who Lyric is. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. he is, he loved it. He a hundred percented it as well. So, and he took his time. He, it, he played that game on stream eight hours a day for two weeks and loved it. Huh. So it's definitely main, dependent on how you play it. The main issue that I've heard that people have with it is that it's not a strand type game. <laughs> God, strand? Tom. Tom, yeah. quit it. It's not a strand type game. Well, because we know there's not a whole lot of those out there. So you got to yeah. play them when you find them. Yeah, you know, I Jesus. only play strand type uh, games. Oh Shut up, Tom. What's a so, strand well, game? Wait, there's a, <laughs> you know the game Death Stranding, Jake. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There was there was there was a time where the creator of that game said that it was going to be the first strand type game. But you can't play you can't place the genre. It's not just an action game. It's not a shooter. It's a it's the first strand, strand type. type game, and then it's that a became a giant game. meme. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, I have not played that game at all. Death Stranding. But it's not for everybody. I it's, like it. I mean, but it's, it's great not for everybody. For a strand type or a strand type game. <laughs> strand type game. God damn. If you like strand type games, you're gonna love Death Stranding. Really? It. What? Why do yeah. I understand this? <laughs> from the like, what he like, what he means by saying it's a strand type game. Like, why do I understand that? It's <laughs> like because he's isn't the character stranded, or uh, kind of feels like they're stranded. Not. Yes and no. Really? It, like there are constantly it's, on it's their more toes like, about shit. It's more like know. actual strands and connections. Oh yeah, the they Ghost they of Tsushima of... has nothing on Death Stranding's narrative. Let me tell you that. Oh my god! Like Ghost of I, Tsushima doesn't yeah, even uh, have a baby in a jar that you strap to your <laughs> chest. Tom. <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, Is there a baby strapped to your chest? No. Yeah. Yes. No, I in mean, in there's there's ghosts. Ghosts. it's like <laughs> a dude with the same rice door just running was... around with a fucking baby on his chest. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe I, I need to experience that story, whether it's good or bad. I need to experience it. It's it's an experience. It's wait, an for experience. It, wait for it to be right. on sale. I'll do that. <laughs> it's what I'm probably doing with it. Cause I, I actually do want to play it because I think the game is something I will enjoy. But I think, yeah, I think you would enjoy it. It's a weird, weird thing. <laughs> I'll wait for a sale. Yeah. 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 Always, always a safe bet. Ah, well. I'm, I'm, speaking of that, I meant to get back into that this week, and I just didn't. All I did was play Escape from Tarkov again. I cannot that get back into that game, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I'm struggling with it. That's fair. It's. I mean, it's a hard game to get into i guess even like even in, for new players or whatever but it's uh the game yeah. itself is just a lot in general i played it so much on that initial hype like with the twitch drops and stuff uh -huh. um and robert was like yeah you gotta play it dude i'm like okay and i played it for like a solid month loving it and and then uh i stopped for a little bit because of valorant and then just cannot get myself to turn it back on and play it because it's so yeah. hard. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's my it's very first match I played, I think was with hype Rob and Jake. That is a group. And then and I have game. not played or even seen Jake play really since that point. Yeah. I don't think hype's played it either. It's just yeah. so like, you know, whenever I'm playing it, I feel like I'm constantly fucking up. Does that make sense? Yep. Just with everything yeah. I do, I'm like, I am fucking up in the way I'm playing this right now. Because, I mean, it's so absolute with what you do. Mm -hmm. They're like most games, like you die at the checkpoint or you die, you respawn. Like this is, you fuck the, up, you're done. The stakes are always high most of the time. And there's so much to learn to mitigate the the likelihood of you losing said things it's just i don't know i could see it being yeah. very hard to get into for sure yeah 
but I also think that once you get into it, if it offers, you know, if you like what the game offers, it's it's easy to get a little, little crack addicted, a little bit of, a little bit of dependency. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, easily. <laughs> yeah, Robert gets on it every night, and Rob, he'll say yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to play anything tonight. I'm just going to chill." And he's like in his hideout, still playing <laughs> the game, and doesn't yeah. consider that he's actually playing the game. <laughs> There's a lot Which to I do. guess he's not. He's just not yeah. going on raids. Yeah. Yeah. What Organizing his stash. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. It's therapeutic. Or- <laughs> organizing stash is too enjoyable for what it is. Yeah. When you when you <laughs> first like Tetris. when you first see the inventory Tetris. system of that game, it looks like a nightmare. Like this is the worst inventory system anybody's ever designed. Why how would why would they do this? It's not, you know, it's not user friendly. But I love the inventory system. I think the fact that you have to Tetris your stuff, like, um, I think you're going to probably bring up like Resident Evil, the old Resident Evil games. Makes me think of old RPGs. Yeah, it's the same inventory system you saw in, you know, stuff like Deus Ex or Resident Evil 4, you know, probably more, more popular to the console people out there. Console people. Yeah. No, yeah, all trash. It. Trash. <laughs> Plebs. But no, um, how have, have those good how have those been going for you, Adam, this week? The rates? Uh pretty decent, yeah. actually. I had some really bad, bad ones. Um the other day I was I was playing by myself and I just could not survive anything. Um but I've been playing some with Acro. I played a couple today and I played some with you, Urk, and those all those raids went pretty well overall yeah it's good to see acro getting back into it yeah. he's been on that fucking runescape oh grind he God. needs to stop it <laughs> because he's gonna get me playing it again if he doesn't eric, fuck, uh, fucking stop if eric, talking about if RuneScape. eric starts playing runescape again we're we're all losing we're, we're we've lost him he's gone yeah oh no yep. dude i don't play wow i know what happens to me in these type of games and he is constantly in there grinding out runescape it is bad for my health. He needs to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played RuneScape since like sixth grade. Yeah. You're probably a lot better off for it, honestly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I played it a little bit in sixth grade and I did not understand the appeal at all. Yeah. I last played it my third year of college <laughs> with the same character the entire fucking time. <laughs> yeah, dude. Way, way, way too much time. <laughs> anywho whatever yeah. floats your boat yeah i mean it's i think acro put it best you play the game because you need to play the game not because you enjoy the game is eventually <laughs> where everyone gets with runescape Ooh. that is sad I, I just once you get to that point you should just stop because if you're you not should. getting anything out of you, playing you can't. <laughs> like, you can't stop it's the yeah. mmo there has grind. to be an actual reason to play no, that reason it's can be fun. Box. That you reason watch, can be a feeling of you accomplishment. Watch the numbers go up. You, you watch your numbers go up, and those help you make other numbers go up, and then you make those numbers go up, and then you repeat that for fifteen years. <laughs> and it doesn't have it as bad, but a lot of MMOs there's the fear of missing out because there's new content that's yeah. coming in. There is no new content in old school RuneScape. RuneScape's different. That's what RuneScape's different. I'm saying traditionally with MMOs that really fit that. I don't play it because I like it. Yeah. I mean, like I know. Oh, go ahead. If you think about it, Minecraft is like there is no reason to play it because all you're doing is mining stuff so that you can mine stuff faster. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Unless you're like. Yeah, pretty much. I but I guess you can build stuff. The, the, the creative space I mean, in that is awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, without that, the grind wouldn't have a point. But I mean, by by doing that that ladder or the stair, you know, walking up the stairs of progression in that way, um, I'm, it, it makes the building easier and stuff. With, without so the building, I then think, it would I be I think it's stupid. why Minecraft like dies after a month mm-hmm. nowadays. Like people, people be like, yes, picks. fuck yeah. They like play it for a month and then they're done. And because yeah. they just don't feel like they're doing anything when they walk around their world anymore. They've like done everything. They've built everything that they need and they have everything they need. Now it's over. 
it's like, all right, what's the point? Uh, Start a new world, I guess. Do it again. That progression, though, like, um, there's a game called Factorio that I played a lot oh, of that um, Epoch got me into. <laughs> and the entire thing is you're making a factory so you can escape essentially but what ends up really happening is you're making a factory so you can make a bigger factory so you can mine more stuff to make a bigger factory <laughs> it's a factory yes. for the sake of a factory yep exactly it's like programming and, in java it's just factories as far as the eye can see i'll let that slide just because i do not want to get into <laughs> that here um <laughs> but yeah oh the epoch in the chat calling you out <laughs> Don't he says? Don't blame me for your lack of sleep and loss of time. <laughs> I mean, that's dude. That game is such a time sink. Like, I'll be in there for like four hours, and I'll realize, holy shit, what the fuck have I done today? Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, there speaking... was somebody on a on a hacker hacker news thread that was talking about Factorio because I think they just had an update. I was about anyway, to bring that up. They so... got their one point release. They're out of early access now. Yeah, that's why it showed up on there. Um, but uh, someone was complaining, and they said, "Yeah, so I'm a programmer by day, and I realize that if I, if I like have a really intense day programming, I don't want to play Factorio because it uses the same kind of brain juices." Yeah. So if you want to do like automation and refactoring and all that kind of stuff, and you know you don't have a, a eight to ten hour a day programming job, then yeah, Factorio can scratch that itch. Yeah, um, you could do some also, really complex. Also, I do like complex. the idea of brain juice as a consumable resource. <laughs> um, so there is legitimate like uh, programming scenarios in that game where you're automating trains place to place based off resource demand and how much you have in inventory, and it, jo you can get some really jo complex shit. Join on me, fellas. Doing Got it. it. So yeah, it's it can get nutty. But anyway, enough of that game. I mean, I haven't actually played that game in a couple months, thankfully. I don't want to get sucked back in. Uh, Tom, you got some shit. Let's talk some shit. Yes, I played a little bit of CSGO, a little bit of Pavlov. There's not much, not much new there. I tried out a game called Void Bastards, um, which is interesting. It's kind of like a... It's a roguelite first-person shooter where you wander around like spaceships and blow stuff up and kill randomly generated enemies and complete tasks and get stuff for crafting. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff there. And then your phone goes off and then it annoys people on the podcast. Oh, come on. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, unprofessional. so unprofessional, you know, putting phones on silence used to be part of the pre podcast prep run book. Yeah. I don't listen to that. Just you saying. guys can't control pre -podcast. me. <laughs> Um, I mean, Adam's literally in the driver's seat. He can control us all <laughs> right now. Yep. <laughs> True. So, uh, yeah, I played a little bit of Void Bastards. It looks interesting, but I don't know if I'm up for that repetitive of a gameplay loop because there's, at least initially, it seems like you walk in, you shoot some stuff sometimes, and that's it. That's the loop. Um, granted, I've only put a couple hours into it, so it could open up later. The guys at Giant Bomb really Beast love for. that game. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to put more time into it because it looks, I mean, it, it doesn't feel like a poorly made game. It feels really well made. It's just something that I don't know if I'm going to spend a lot of time with. Yeah, and that's a lot of, or I don't want to say a lot. Some roguelikes you really need to put time in to get immersed in it before it actually starts yeah. to feel full. Like Isaac, right? Yeah. Like, like you, you really start to understand Isaac after you've you know run through a few times. Specifically, about the binding of Isaac, Isaac. You start to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah the binding know. of Isaac. Oh, people who don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I played some of that. Um, I played a little bit more Hitman too, which uh, Jake, I think that's a game that you would fucking love. Um, yeah, I've never played any of the so, Hitman games ever. Oh, it's so good. I, uh, I downloaded some DLC and it was, I actually got really fucking frustrated at the game because I was like, okay, well, I'm next to the target. Like I'm standing next to the people I have to kill. I'm in disguise. They don't know I'm here, but now I don't know what to do to get them away from everybody so I can murder them. And that's <laughs> the challenge I'm running into right now is, okay, 
I'm here, like, I've gotten through everything, I've made my way through the puzzle box to, like, the, quote, boss lair. Like, I, I can see the dude I need to stab. How the fuck do I do this without tripping every single alarm and then getting murdered right after? Uh, and it's it's not easy, but it's a whole lot of fun. Um, I'm right now trying to steal a chef outfit so I can poison their dinner so they go to the bathroom and start throwing up so then I can kill them in the bathroom and then stuff them in a wardrobe. That's my current plan. But hey, if it fucks up... I, uh, Back to the I drawing to, board. Yeah, I get to explore a totally new problem space. Yeah, I like that. I, I think I, I need to give those a try, for sure. They They're look like fun. Really, from really the good. Stuff that I've seen. The Not re every the rem- level is fantastic, but most of them are. The remakes seem to have really, really done well. I, they're not remakes, though. That's the thing. Well, they're totally well, new the, games, the, but with I, the same name. The same name. I don't mean remake. Yeah, it's just I didn't know what to call it. Reimagining, the reboot, new, the new revamp. something. Yeah, it's it's just the latest game. It's that fucking garbage naming model that companies need to stop doing. <sighs> yes. Um, I think we anyway. Yeah, no, it, that's that's a rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, yeah, so Hitman is fucking great. Um, Blade and Sorcery had a new update, so you can now cast Fireball, and hey. you've got a cool gravity spell, which lets you, like, Darth Vader force choke people, so that's kind of neat. Dope. <laughs> yeah. Everybody... <laughs> there's, there's really not much to that game, but if you like swinging swords and, like, beheading people, then yeah, it's, it's good for a romp. Everyone wants to feel like Darth Vader every once in a while, so that's a good ad. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Especially on the index, because that probably actually has more yeah. of an actual choke feel to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you does. really want to feel like really you're choking cool. somebody, you got to have the the index. Yeah, and, and definitely maybe a get major like selling a, point. Um, yeah, and like a Jif peanut butter jar, and you know, go all out, get the whole <laughs> sensation. Sorry. All right, let's <laughs> really get this podcast going in one direction. Um, rank these in order. Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Lord Ooh. of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, Star Harry Wars, Potter, Harry Star Potter. Wars. Actually. Yeah, I'd rank Star Wars the worst. Uh, I like Star I Wars. Ooh. Not Harry a Star Potter, Wars guy. Harry Potter is the worst I'm, for me, I'm but a I toss, like them all. I'm a toss-up between Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, honestly. I don't like Lord of the Rings as much as everybody else does. I, I really like love I, Harry, po- Harry Potter's number one for me, for sure. Ooh, we have yeah. uh, someone in chat. Yusuf uh, nope. doesn't like any of them. Yusuf doesn't like anything. That's fair. Okay. Right. <laughs> Yusuf is D-Lass. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, Friggin' Yusuf. <laughs> Let's see. What else did I play? Oh, uh, I started playing Prey Moon Crash. So I wanted to play an immersive sim. But I didn't want to have like all the baggage of playing a forty to sixty hour game. Like I just wanted to get in, get out, and you know, if I fuck up, whatever, I'll try again. So I wanted something that was roguelike, but also an immersive sim. And come to find out, Prey has got this Moon Crash DLC, which is literally that. It is all the great gameplay systems of Prey, but in a roguelite formula. Um, it's really cool. So you've got multiple characters that you unlock over the course of the game. And your objective is to get all five of them off of the space station. Like you, you have to figure out a way to like get them to escape pods or teleporters or something like that. Um, except that the world is semi-persistent. Like for your characters, if you know one out of the five characters does something to the environment, like opens a door or hacks a robot, when the next character goes through in that run... That's static, and that stays the way it is. The world only resets after you have, like, saved everyone or killed everyone, or whatever combination thereof. Uh, so you can do really cool things, like, you know, your, your heavy hitter guy, your security guard with all the guns. You can be like, okay, well, I've got 10 HP left. There's no way I make it through. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and put my guns in this storage area next to what I know is going to be the spawn point for this weaker guy who doesn't get a lot of guns. And I'll die really quickly thereafter, so I've got a better chance next time around. Uh, and it's 
it's really cool because not only do you get like the cool immersive sim like you know system shock bioshock style of using a bunch of tools and systems to navigate a world but then you add this persistent world roguelite on top of it uh which is really really interesting um i've only put a couple hours into it so far but i am really really enjoying my time and to be clear this is in like 2017 prey right yeah oh what the fuck huh yeah (laughs) <laughs> that, uh, that, that sounds cool though i mean it sounds interesting it's really fucking cool um so like if if you know that okay well this guy the the volunteer so i give like these big archetypes okay so the volunteer needs to get to this escape pod but that escape pod is locked up and we're gonna need a security guy to drag batteries from this heavily infested area over to this one and then I'm going to use the mechanic to fix this thing and then hack this door open and get the escape pod online. Then I'm going to use the volunteer to just get the fuck out. Um, and you can set up really cool scenarios like that. And, you know, after everybody dies or gets saved, the world resets and there's additional complications and weirdness with the world that you're navigating. Uh, so it's kind of an always ever changing, but still the same physical layout. Um, Throughout the start of the game, it's it's a really weird take on roguelites, uh, but it's a kind it, of, it works so far. Is it kind of like visceral cleanup, only in prey? Um, and granted, it's you're not, not a cleaning terrible shit, comparison. But... Yeah, it's not a terrible comparison. So, like, where that game will change certain aspects of the level, but not the level itself. Yeah, yeah. it kind of works like that. So, like, sometimes there will be, you know, oxygen missing, or power will be out in some place, or there's fire, or, like, hardened enemies. And you can't just, like, sit around and prep forever, because you're also fighting a timer. And as that timer ticks up, the enemies become more and more powerful uh, in the level. So you're incentivized to get in, get out, and spend as little time in there as possible. Because if you spend a lot of time, you're fucking yourself over. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. That's that's it's, not anything I'd have ever expected to be added to Prey. Yeah. Yeah, I know. No, not at all. Is this cool. this proper them DLC or is this like a mod yes. that someone made? Nope. This is this is all them. Huh. That's pretty cool. That's bizarre. I like that. But yeah. Yeah, it's it's 20 bucks. So if you have Prey, and I know Prey has been in like every sale, and I think maybe a humble bundle. Um, it's 20 bucks on Steam for that DLC. And uh, yeah, so far, I think it's worth it. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool and pretty different too. So you can pretty much get two games in it's, one. It's weird. Why I really wanted to play it is because I didn't feel like playing stuff with a whole lot of consequence or like permanency to my actions. Like, I wanted a roguelike of some kind, but I also had a craving for prey and all those systems and how shit like works together and you can carve your own path through the world. And uh, yeah, I got both in this package. Nice. Um, any other games? Uh, that yeah. Pretty much tapping you. I've um, spent the last like day and a half trying to figure out the new format for RLCS. <laughs> it's a lot, man. Okay. There's it's a, a lot, lot going on. So there's three events per time. So like the fall is going to have three different events, if I re- understand correct. Each have their own open quals. You get points for these. And then teams with the most points end up making better seating in the open qual for the actual RLCS play-in. If I understand all of this correctly. I think you're right. Yes. To my understanding, I, I like the system a lot more. It is definitely a lot more complicated. I think Way it gives the it's. I like how it's like ten months long. This whole process, yes, which I is love pretty that. cool. I love that it's like more tournaments for Rocket League in that mm-hmm. in that way. There's just so much more going on all the time, especially since this game's going to go free to play really soon. Yep, that's good timing as well. Like this more competition more people are going to watch it um so and it's going to give the guys who like in the past it's one day maybe two 
that's like do or fucking die to make RLRS or RLCS. It's like you better be on this one day or you're done. And now yeah. it's kind of like, well, you got now you have to be you know, consistent. You got to be consistent, which I think will bring out the best teams for more sure. often. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, not. and it's open. I love that aspect. Literally, yeah. if I could put a team together and have the same aspiration as anyone of I'm going to make it to the top of the top of Rocket League. This is an open for that. Yeah. That is a rad fucking thing to do. And, and it's not just re- one day, you know? Yeah. It's like a lot you could do. Well, and awesome. I also like they're giving like the teams that were already in RLCS auto quals or giving the non-relegated yeah. RLRS teams um, a certain spot in the play-ins. So they're doing it in a really good way. It's just so complicated. Yep. But I had to watch like the same, uh, what's like a Lawler video like twice now, try and get it. He he made like a 10 minute video explaining it. And I'm still like, dude, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> but it is, it is the best move. It was a great move by yeah, them. Yeah, it's, it's a good move. It, everyone seems to like it. All the pros seem to like it. So and al- plus. also um take this time to call out um so 72 pink connector is officially in the dance. Uh yes, sir. I wonder and Jacob fucking made quals or made it through quals to get to the uh fall regional. So hell yeah. The first fall regional, I should say. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh one thing that I want to point out is that um some people were upset that or not upset, but just kind of you know, a little down about how nobody could, none of the games were streamed, you know, um, no one could see the qualifier games. So uh, me and Josh had this, well, is Josh and he asked me to do this. Um, he gave me the replays and I'm commentating over them and they'll be up on the YouTube channel soon on starting on Monday. So Hell I'll have a awesome. video for, yes. I'll have so a exciting. video starting each day. So like Monday will be day one of the qualifiers. Uh, Tuesday will be day two and Wednesday will be day three of Fuck all yeah. their games. So you can watch them. That's awesome. And my shitty commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think your so commentary would be good. You've got a, you're really good at the game. You've got a good grasp of how the game works and stuff. I think, I think your commentary would be great. Every yeah, time I'd... you've commentated on one of our tournaments, it's been fantastic. Yeah, I'm well. Obviously, I'm obnoxiously biased, though. (laughs) That's fine. I'll mention that as well. I'm like, guys, I'm not like I am rooting for the boys. You know, they're shredding the gnar (laughs) out here. You know, I'm I'm voting for Beans Esports. Beans Beans Esports. Yeah, they played. uh, (laughs) Who's a? I commentated one today that was like YYC Esports, and they're like a team based out of like British Columbia or something, which was kind of cool when I looked them up. But yeah, I'll I'll show like the uh, the stats after each series and show how many goals each guy got and things like that. So they, I think nice. it, it's going to turn out pretty cool. That, yeah, it's so. going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing that. But yeah, is it going to be strand replays. type commentary? Or? Yes, strand. strand. Adam, please handle Tom. Okay. Uh, I will have <laughs> I will have the guy from The Walking Dead holding a baby in a tank. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Every as long time as it's Jacob type comes on, this, on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> but no, also, uh, one more call out about the team. Um, they play tomorrow, yes. and it is against uh, Space Station streamed. Gaming. No, not yes, sorry, sir. sorry, sorry. Pittsburgh Knights. Pittsburgh Knights. Pittsburgh Knights. Pittsburgh Knights. Yes. Yeah. Monkas. Had to correct myself on that one real quick. There are some big names in that bracket, by the way. Did you guys look at the bracket? Oh, yeah. dude, it's, I mean, it's they're the big they're boys. in the dance, man. They're there. They're the big. They're one of the big boys. It's <laughs> yeah, but there there was it. there were multiple uh, sets of of groups, right? And and ours seems to have all. Hey, of them. hey man, I'm, all I'm saying is, like, you want to play the best, go for it, man. Like yeah. this is it. You don't play to make them better. No, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. stacked lineup. I'm looking Fuck forward yeah, to seeing how go. it plays out. Yeah. Yeah, Josh so is saying that it's split between two, two groups. Two groups, yeah. Yep. Yep. So I mean, in all honesty, you look at both sides. There's probably killers on both sides. For but, sure. Yeah, this only is, one first killer. Ah, right. That's a good ah. <laughs> How many Rocket League pros do you know outside of our team? Uh, I mean names. That's, 
Because I think you just about exhausted it there. Name two more. <laughs> yeah, no, I name missed two muffins. more. Yeah, name and one. And Ty one. Not Tyler and Wonder and Jacob. <laughs> and there's Demo and Outside Ryan of our Blaze team. And... Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> All right, of players who have never been a part of the 72 PC team. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, fuck. Can you name, name five? One player from Cloud9. Oh, wait. Uh, I don't even know if I can do that anymore. They're, They're not switch even around the, so much. They, Cloud9 oh, that's right. Yeah. League yeah, anymore. that's true. Isn't it, is so, it Justin? Is Justin Cloud9? No one's See, Cloud9. Uh, no one's Cloud9. Uh, NRG, now, but... NRG. Okay. All uh, right, either way. We were that's just one. being dicks. Don't worry about us. Yeah, sorry. No. <laughs> ah, okay, fellas. That's it. Uh, is there any more any more games or shockingly I, new games? footage? I thought I had one more. Oh yeah. So uh last night with uh Acro and Magic Dave, I played some Serious Sam HD. Um so have you guys played Serious Sam? Do you know this series? Um I know of the series. I know it's um over the top action kind of funny game, right? Yes, it is. It is a first person shooter like first person shooters were in the 90s. So you, there's a level, you go to a level with big guns and you shoot anything that moves until it doesn't move. And that's the game. Oh, um, sounds like it fun. is waves, waves of enemies just surrounding you. Uh, circle strafing is the only game you can play. Uh, it's a shit ton of fun. Um, fucking circle strafing i have forgotten is about that mechanic just <laughs> circle strafing the game that's it there's no like oh hey it looks like some some raspberry jelly covered my screen i'm gonna duck behind a chest high wall for 20 minutes <laughs> while while the jelly drips off no it's hey there's some ar their armor over here and there's an ammo pack and oh fuck i just ran out of bullets let's use the gun that fires literal cannonballs the size of a Dodge Neon at the enemies. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a fuck ton of fun. Um, and it usually goes on sale for a couple bucks. So if you want something that's just a ridiculous party shooter, seriously, it's fantastic. Also, you can play in VR. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, so Dave is not a good governor of this because he is generally excitable. But my God, <laughs> the excitement excitable. during this game. <laughs> That's so true with Dave. Oh my god. <laughs> when I, I love that uh, about Dave though. <laughs> I love that about Dave too. It's amazing. But like every like rant like I'll do shit show Saturday or Sundays on stream and he'll be like, Oh, I play I've I have 30 hours in this game. I'm like the fuck, dude? This is drug dealer simulator. <laughs> it's like he's just so he's, he's such in. a gamer, dude. Yeah, it's he's awesome. In on it. And I like he was losing his shit, and then I looked down like, holy fuck! It it reminded me of the wave shooter they made for VR, the level you guys were in. It just kept coming yeah. and coming and oh coming. Oh my god! So we were we were playing on hard mode, and we decided like we started out with five lives split between all of us, and we only get five deaths. Um, and then that was way too fucking hard, so we bumped it to ten, and then we kept getting our shit kicked. And so we bumped it to 30, and we were just barely making it out with, like, one or zero lives. The last level, Magic Dave had to, like, the last level we completed, he had to make a mad dash for the exit because we were all dead. He had no ammo, no health, and he was the only one who could get us through to the next stage. It was insane. Intense. I might, I might pick it up next time it's on sale. It's, Maybe. It's like... Yeah, it's like three dollars. Actually, I think uh, I might have a few copies of it because I keep getting it in like all kinds of bundles and shit. So um, I'll give you one. Okay, sounds good. It still blows it's my mind out. that the I'd devs love. of Serious Sam ended up making the Talos Principle, possibly the, right? the most different of a game you could possibly make from Serious Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let's make a puzzle-based introspective philosophy game. Okay, let's make a game where headless men run at you with, like, comical cartoon bombs and kamikaze you to death. <laughs> yeah, th it's the same game, right? The only thing yeah. similar about those two games is that they're first person. Yeah. When you said Serious th Sam, I thought you were talking about Pajama Sam. What is Pajama Sam? <laughs> you never played That's those? slightly different. No. I've never Very heard different. of it. 
it was like my like first computer game? game ever. Yeah, it was a kid game. I played it when I was like nine. And it's like this kid who's stuck in a dream and you have to go and find all of his socks and put them back in the drawer. <laughs> and then he can wake up from the dream. I, that, that game scared the shit out of me when I was a kid because it was kind of creepy. Yeah. Only and, dream uh, game I ever played was fucking uh, Dream Master. NES. Shit was a banger. Never played NES. What? Hold on. What? Never, never had an NES. I've never had a Nintendo system in my life. <laughs> my man. But uh, I actually, so I missed the Sorry. stream, unfortunately. <laughs> but you so were there's... playing Breath of the Wild recently, weren't you? Yeah, so one of my friends brought over his Switch last night, and she said she let me borrow it to play Breath of the Wild. Oh, cool. Oh, what, yeah. do, you what do you think so far? It's cool. It's way better than that fucking other game you made me play. Ocarina of Time. Weeks. Ocarina of Time, oh dude. The God. Water Temple Ocarina just ended that is... game for me, dude. I hate <laughs> yes. it now. The I Ocarina despise of Time it. is a fantastic game. The no. Water Temple is the worst part about gaming. No, the Water Temple ruined the entire game. It makes the whole game bad. Zero out of ten because Zero. of the Water Temple. <laughs> this is awful. So, so what are you thinking of Breath of the Wild, though? I like, think it's beautiful. And she showed me her character, and she has like 500 hours in the game, and she is like yeah. decked out. I'm like, okay, this gets pretty deep. And so I'm, I'm excited to play it. I really am. I don't I know found, really the story that much, but I've only I found played it for like two hours. A, I found it to be a great RPG that was skinned to Zelda last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, you're well, not, yeah, you're not wrong. That's like it doesn't really feel like a Zelda game. They they literally took everything that made a quote Zelda game and they said, "Is this really core to the experience?" And the answer was ultimately no for most things except exploration and puzzle solving. And that's what the game leans into. You are only but, doing two things in Breath of the Wild. You are either exploring or solving puzzles. Which isn't a bad thing. It does those things really, really well. That's that's what Zelda is. Yeah, yeah those they just innovated. Yeah, yeah. Nice. The the temples are sometimes fun. innovation yeah. is cutting and and taking oh, things out. Sure. Yeah. Have you uh, hit any of the frame drop areas yet, Jake? No, I'm I'm like an hour and a half in the game. That's okay. it. Okay. So. I'm just out in the huh? green pastures looking at giant scary shit out in this out there that I'm not brave enough to go toward yet. <laughs> that game Pretty is much. I love how that game set up is okay, you've done these four shrines to start the game. Beat Ganon. Like that that's the next objective. <laughs> Beat the game. <laughs> step, like straight out of the tutorial. That is legitimately one, the first mission. Step yeah. one, draw some circles. Step two, objective. draw the rest of the owl. <laughs> and it just feeds into that exploration that Tom's talking about. Like the game is just so fun just to run around and just do shit. I think it would be pretty cool if like right off the bat, the only objective that you get on your HUD is defeat Ganon right from the beginning. <laughs> That's it. Well, like, and you gotta run and you just gotta run around and figure it out. You know? So, I think that'd um, be cool. Jake, I I am going to recommend that you change one thing to your, your base experience the first time through Breath of the Wild. Okay. Go into options and turn on the Pro HUD. So that'll remove like the shrine markers, the mini map, the temperature. It'll literally just show your hearts. And Ooh. I think it's so much better because you now need to pay attention to the world and what the world looks like. And, uh, you know, pay attention to your breath and how the weather looks instead of like looking and be like, oh, it's going to rain in 10 minutes. It just fucking rains in 10 minutes. And unless you're paying attention to the clouds, you get caught out. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think I would play it like that. Just total like it's, you got to pay attention to yeah what the game gives you instead of just like it telling you. Yes. What's going, and, going like, on, you know, don't don't be afraid to like go back to the standard HUD after you get, you know, the hang of everything, because like I found out after I beat the game, I turned the pro HUD off and I'm now using it to do like shrine collecting and other other things like that. Um, but yeah. the first time through, highly recommend the pro HUD. OK. 
Thank more you. games need to do a minimalistic HUD. I like, I like, I I really like, I like when there is no HUD whatsoever. I By really the way, like Ghost Tsushima, no today. HUD. Yeah. There is no HUD most unless are, you need it. A lot of games today are giving you toggleable options. So you literally go to the options menu and, hey, do you not want the quest marker, like that giant fucking arrow pointing this way to beat the game the entire time? Do you want to wander through on your own? Turn it off. Uh, yeah. Or I especially liked how uh, Nier Automata did it, where yes. pieces of the HUD were literally taking up consumable resources. So, hey, do you need, like, an extra, like, one or two power slots? Uh, turn off your health meter. Like, that's hmm. it. And turn that, off your health I thought meter. that oh, was do you want one of the coolest two? mechanics. Turn off your minimap. And there's literally it's a really component funny. in there that's your life support, that if you pull it, you die. Dude, Which is, well, that's not, exactly not what happened die. the first time I played Nier, and I stopped playing because I didn't understand it. <laughs> not and I re only do I you die, it. the the credits roll. It's an ending. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was There's so like... confused when that happened to me. I pulled something out, I died, and then I was back at the the beginning, like same cutscene. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> Like what? I didn't get it, and I was like, "All right, this game's stupid," and I refunded it. That was what, years see, ago. That's, that's when I got balls deep into it, and what I ended up doing is had like multiple builds. Where like, if I'm fighting, I don't need my mini map, don't need this, don't need that, minimalist HUD, and then just go with all these power ups. And then whenever I'm exploring, like I have the mini map and all this other shit. Hmm. It really lets you min max your HUD, which is a really fucking weird thing to ever say. <laughs> Mid max your HUD. Yeah. Just mid max yeah. your HUD, bro. Yeah. What you doing? But yeah, okay. Um for the sake of moving. Um any other games? No. That's not for me. Go, no. Okay. So news. you guys ready to talk about the news of the week, which could end up being fucking huge? Oh God. Yes, sir. Uh, at Epic is currently suing Apple, and I believe they're also starting a lawsuit against Google for anti-competitive... Yes, don't, don't bury the lead. Uh, the lead. Come on, guys. We, we got to get people excited in our news stories. You can't get Fortnite any, anymore. Fortnite is now banned <laughs> from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Fortnite gone forever? Question mark. Maybe. Find out tonight at 10 on the 72 <laughs> God damn it. Tom. All right. What's the real okay. news now? The actual news. Okay. I mean, that's it. So, Literally, that's it. There's no more so, Fortnite on the mobile stores. So, what happened is. Um, Amen. True. Apple. <laughs> Apple's app. Or I'm just going to focus on the Apple part of this, but it's going to be kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Apple, to be in their store, you have to go through their payment system. If you go through their payment system, they get a 30% cut. A la, if you're on their store, they get a 30% cut. Okay. So, Epic Google came out has and very said, similar rules. Yes. Epic came out and said, you know what? Y'all go through Epic Games and buy this shit. You get a 25% off. Um, you know, Apple, not a dumb company, caught on to this and instantly removed them from the store. In response, it literally Epic even says in Apple's developer rules that you cannot have disparate prices just because something's on iOS. So what hmm. this means or what this led to is Epic is now suing Apple and also now Google for anti-competitive behavior. Now, this is really big because just three weeks ago, Apple was one of the tech companies before Congress. And the reason they were getting drilled was anti-competitive behavior with their app store. So this is lining up right with what Congress is hitting on them. And this could be a huge precedent being set if they actually take this lawsuit all the way. Huge precedent. So I don't, I, I think it's, I think it's interesting, but honestly, the thing we all need to remember is that these are, <laughs> Epic is not an indie gaming studio. Epic is not the little guy. They are a massive fucking corporation. Google and Apple are massive fucking corporations. And this has got all the hallmarks of a PR stunt. Like, okay, Apple and Google have rules. You know, you can argue that they're not fair. I will absolutely argue that the 30% cut is not fair. 
um, right? Like even even Epic Games was created because they didn't like, or the Epic Games store was created because they didn't like Steam, Elf Software taking 30% for stuff on Steam. And they said, nah, we're making our own fucking store, which so far has worked out decently for them and a bunch of other devs. Um, but Epic was ready right there with a fully produced uh, you know, teaser trailer making fun of Apple's 1984 commercial when they were trying to take on IBM because Apple was a small, scrappy startup and IBM was the powers that be. It's, it's a PR move between two giant companies with fuck tons of money and fuck tons of lawyers, and it's just a contract dispute. That's what this comes down to. You know, m- will it be bigger? Yeah, it could be, but this isn't like a... Apple is evil. Google is evil. They're all fucking evil. Let's be but, real. But the thing um, is, if they, if they take Epic, it the distance, though, this is legal precedence. Are they evil just because they have be. a lot of money? I don't think so. Like, okay, like Google, Google does shady shit. Apple does a lot of shady shit. Epic does a lot of shady shit. They all do shady shit, but most companies do. Um, it's I think it's important to not get caught up in the tribalism of fuck Epic because I don't like Fortnite or fuck <laughs> Apple because I don't like Apple or fuck Google because they take all my information. Right. Like tribalism isn't going to help anything. This is a contract negotiation. It just got really public. Who's going to win? So and uh, and Dave, Dave calls out that, yeah, if Epic signed a contract with Apple slash Google, they don't have a leg to stand on. And they didn't. It expressly says in all of those store policies, hey, you got to follow these rules or else you get removed from the store. Epic didn't follow the rules. They got removed from the store. Shocked Pikachu face. But just because there's rules. <laughs> yeah, for the record, what do you think's going to happen? No, 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 no. But for, let's be clear. Just because someone says these are the rules doesn't mean those rules are legal. Oh, shit. That's the thing. But it's a payment processor, and this has already been, like, covered in several laws across everything. Like, people try to sue uh, MasterCard and Visa for the same shit where they're taking a percentage for running payment infrastructure, right? Um, But the the difference is, though, there's no alternative in those. We're here for... So Epic had the alternative. There is an alternative for Google. They're like, right? So all Android phones, you can just check a box and go to like epicgames.com and download Fortnite on your own. Now yes, for and Apple, that's where, you're right. There's no alternative. And that's where I really didn't want to focus on the Google end because I think technically Google, there, there's ways around it for Google. There isn't for Apple. Short right. of jailbreaking so, your phone, there isn't for Apple. So, um... Dave is is pointing out if they signed a contract, that means they agreed to it, even if it isn't legal. And that is 100% not true. I can give you a legal contract that says you're my slave, but that is 100% illegal. And contracts do not override the law. They never will. Um, So if a contract tries to get you to agree to some shady shit, if it's against the law, guess what? That part of the contract is null and void and not enforceable. There's a lot of ways. In several court cases. NDAs often get waived. Because of some mm-hmm. legal, like some aspect of the NDA was illegal, so the whole NDA gets thrown out. Kind of, as Comrade Bunny points out, our marriage is a lie, right? But either way, <laughs> um, expect to have follow-ups on this as more stuff develops on it. Um, this probably won't end in a settlement. This is either going to go the distance, or Epic's going to drop it. I because yeah. yeah. settlement would imply just a monetary exchange and Epic is a big enough company. They don't care about that. I I just I don't I don't see that Epic has a case here. Right. There's clear rules that are applied mostly across the board. Not perfectly, but I mean, they have they a, agreed to it. They broke the rules. The consequences happened. Now they're suing because something that was literally black and white on paper that says if a do b happened and they're, they're okay. suing because it's anti-competitive and anti-competitive yeah. behavior like that is illegal and that's where i'm now, saying the big precedent comes now would would i like to see more competition or apple being more transparent with their app store policies or maybe maybe take down that 30 percent that's clearly rent seeking in most cases yeah absolutely do I think this is the right way to do that? That I'm less I'm less convinced of. I I don't necessarily think it's the right way, but it gets it done. 
because otherwise it may never get done or take forever to get done. Yeah. If you get, like, let's say they take it the distance one way or the other. If they take it the distance and it goes up in a federal court, we'll know where this stands. Yeah. And it'll set the precedent for everything. So that's why I'm really excited about this. I want this to go the distance because I want there to be like, okay, there's no more gray area. This is allowed or this isn't allowed. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Classic Tom defending Apple. Uh, <laughs> AOL Instant Messenger, I think you missed the part where I literally called all of those companies evil, but without much evidence. But Classic Tom defending <laughs> Apple. I mean, look everyone at Everyone sucks. Oh, is that, is does that suck. really Classic Tom, though? Like, Tom didn't yes. come around to Apple recently. until, like, he got the phone or something recently, right? And, and and let's, didn't let's you hate clear, Apple right? until There's... you were forced to use one for work and then you decided you there... liked it? No, no, that's not what happened. Uh, what happened is that I bought a $1,000 phone from Google, and after two years, they said, yeah, we're not supporting this anymore. I'm like, but but this $1,000 phone gets six oh. years of support. And they're like, cool, buy that one. And then I did. <laughs> um, also, to be clear, to, to I want to make clear, something clear to Epoch. MacBooks OS X, like their entire desktop laptop infrastructure, is a goddamn fucking garbage fire. Your I would rather do lying. my work on a fucking thirty dollar Raspberry Pi than I would on a MacBook. I fucking hate my MacBook. I hate mine as well. But I want to clear something that uh, Dave pulled out. <laughs> He's saying, again, not the fault of the company. The whole population makes them to where they're a juggernaut. It's not that they are a monopoly taking all the cash. It's that they are restricting everyone that's in that ecosystem to have to go through their store, which forces through their payment system. They are forcing everyone to funnel all their money through them. That is where so, the issue is. Like, they don't have to do that. Having the population there doesn't mean they have to do that. That's where the argument lies in the legal suit. But there's there's a lot of places where that sort of thing is the norm, right? Do you do you want to buy a Blu-ray disc? Cool. Do you want to make a Blu-ray disc? Awesome. Sony's getting a cut of that money either way. Because you're using their tech. Because you opted to make their tech. You have to license it. You yeah, have to license yeah. their tech. And to you're, make you're no, you made your own old... tech in their infrastructure and their app store and their their download points and CDN like. It's, you know, running these stores is not a zero sum cost. No, 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 no. no. Here's the thing. Make them pay to be on the store. I mean, isn't don't, that what don't. they're doing? No, 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 no. They're not. Subscription cost or, or one-time fees or anything else. It's their business and it can be their business no, no. model. It, it, it's a big difference being on the store. Buddy, this is sounded like communist propaganda here. <laughs> no, no, no. The big, the throw big some red scare stuff. I think Irk's a communist, okay. guys. <laughs> okay, Tom. Tom oh, no. <laughs> the difference here. Oh my God. If you have to pay to be on the store versus pay for the payment system, Epic's free to play. They make their money from microtransactions in game. If Apple's getting their hands on in-game transactions, that's huge. Where if they just have to pay to be on the store, it's not as big. There's a big difference between payment system and store. There's a reason yeah, Apple inserted I, themselves on the <laughs> payment system, not on the store. <laughs> I don't I don't think you're gonna win this. I don't think there's any winning in this conversation. <laughs> Either we're gonna get called chills or You're communist. A communist. <laughs> Vidavi calls out wow communist some chills. Vidavi calls out wow some legal talk by some real experts. Classic Irk Tom convo. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> let's let the lawyers. Anyway. Hey boys, let's let the lawyers handle this one and see what comes of it, huh? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> also, uh, you said uh, I think redeemed. Epic Games should hire me. Yeah. Well, um, redeemed hydrate, by the way, fellas. Yusuf plays. Drink a drink. I know you can't see I'm it on Tom right and now, Jake's but camera, but yeah, I don't have a camera. You just have to take their word for it. Redeemed sip, it twice. Sip extra loud yeah. so they can so we can hear it. I'm out. I can't drink more, fuckers. <laughs> Everyone's this happens, doing it. This happens every time, by the way. This is not a new phenomenon. I know. <laughs> this Delicious is not new. water. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to start, like, bringing a beer and sitting it on my desk unopened and then open it mid-cast. Or you could just get a water bottle. All right, guys. Um, That's not is, hydration. This is getting out of Here's hand. hydration. Drake. I have to bring in the big guns. 
God damn it. <sighs> All right, here All we right. go. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. <So. laughs> what the fuck? Did you just grab the pitcher? Yes, oh yes, you did. Oh, my God. Holy. Dude. <laughs> God <laughs> damn. All right. Whew. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Dobby, I have no input on any of this. <laughs> I am not a lawyer in any yeah. any regard, so I don't know. I don't have an input either, honestly. I was just stating what their argument is, but either way. Um, I just hope the people who made Fortnite get fucked. All right, so, it, like, all right. Why? Okay, real talk. Why the fuck does everybody hate Fortnite? Fortnite is it literally sucks. because it's planned? No, no, I'm kidding. It's no, not that's that bad. Not a- I'm kidding. It's a it's a <laughs> meme. It's a, really dude, it's a yeah. it's, well it's a fucking meme, dude. It's a really good game for little kids. That got I, way over. It's just a good game overall. Like people hate on Minecraft because kids played it, and then kids switch to Fortnite, and everyone's like, "Oh, Minecraft is great," and then they <laughs> fucking hate Fortnite. Like, do you just hate everything that children like? Do people just people hate the children? absolutely think like that? Anything that gets popular, people will find a reason to hate it. It's just a thing. There are people who there are always hate whatever. I'm, like I'm it, the fucking yeah. pretentious oh, yeah. indie guy. I think Fortnite is great. I thought Fortnite was cool when they were going all competitive with it, and that's when I played it because I like playing competitive video games. So I was like, okay, this is cool. There's a three million dollar tournament on the line. That's dope. They did that. I thought that was cool, and now they're going the route of the casual player which makes them more money and that's fine for them. But all of their professional scene does not like Fortnite right now. See, what gets me I though, it's like for that me, that sucks for the 0.3% of players. Who exactly. Care about that. Mm-hmm. And well, see, why that... would Epic games care about them? You know, like 99% of the rest of the player base doesn't care about competitive and well, they just want to buy the new skin. I, I wouldn't confuse esports having an esports scene versus a game being competitive and people like playing competitively. You don't need esports for a game to be competitive. Yeah, I, I guess my point is like I liked it when they focused I mean, at on the esport, I guess. And now I, they, and I can they see don't. That. That's fair. Which All is right, not so... in their best interest to do so. So it makes sense. What the fuck Scott so said to on? Yeah, I've been trying to. All right, so if we're done talking about the the epic lawsuit thing, um, V Dobby redeemed our, his channel points, ten thousand of them, which is a lot. Uh, choose a podcast topic. So, oh God, he asked, "What is your favorite gun from any video game?" Easy, Flat Cannon, Unreal Tournament, nineteen ninety nine. That's a quick wow, answer. That, Tom's thought about this me, before. Bro. The yeah. intervention from Modern Warfare Two. The intervention. Ooh, that's a good one too. The sniper. Which one is that? Oh, okay. the sniper. Oh, Phoenix man. Perfect Dark, the one with explosive oh. bullets. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, is it cheating if I say the portal gun? No, it's a gun. Huh? I'll accept the portal gun. Davi is uh, is portal gun an acceptable answer? Or are we talking about like gun for the purpose of damage? I mean, you could do some damage yeah, to that portal gun. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you destroy uh, a lot of robots with it. Yeah, I'd have to think honestly. If if not portal gun, I'd have to think of what. I can't really. Nothing comes to to mind right off the bat. Clob, golden eye. Oh God, the clob! <laughs> Such a garbage <laughs> machine gun. <laughs> Oh right? my god. It's like <laughs> everyone fucking up forgets Uzi. about the claw. <laughs> it's not even They're... beefed up. Like I would rather use the default pistol than the clob. Everyone would. That was the meme gun if you got killed with. Like people ran the claw yeah. because they were so good they would kick your ass. Yeah. But uh Delias is pulling out a Halo 1 pistol. Great fucking call. Nice. Yeah. Such a good fucking gun. You mean overpowered the rifle? Shit. Yeah, I say it's overpowered <laughs> as shit. And uh, Scott's calling out the laptop gun from Portal One or Portal One. Holy shit! Perfect Dark. Which that was, that was fun. Too. 
because being able to oh. set it up as a sentry. Oh, okay. So yeah. se- second favorite gun and enter the gungeon. There's a gun that's a bullet and you shoot guns out of the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's a good there's, touch. There's one that's a shotgun shell that fires shotguns. And then when the shotguns the hit one. things, they fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> so fucking good. Uh, all right. Is there any more gun talk? Um, no. Hmm. Well, in that case, Tom. Uh, you know what? Close second for me, gravity gun. Nice. I figured you were going to go with that to start with. Yeah, I kind of figured too. Yeah, flat cannon, though. I gotta gotta give it to my boy, the flat cannon. So, what some of you who are watching might be able to see is Tom has a Parsec shirt on. So, Tom, Ubisoft, yeah. the Parsec teamed up. Or team yeah, up, they did. Robert um so uh yeah it looks like they're gonna team up with parsec use some of their tech to do some game streaming stuff and uh be able to give people like uh you know journalists and stuff early access to some of their games and first looks and stuff like that so that's that's kind of neat you don't really have to ship around code if you can just you know get somebody to look at a monitor and use a controller to play your the latest build of your game that's dope and- that's actually Tom, helpful. that could be good for you because that could mean that more games are going to be, you know, perfectly supporting this coming out. I mean, uh, to be fair, the the amount of issues I've had on Parsec with certain games like are single digits. Like I, it's not even hit ten games because literally it's just letting me use a controller on a different computer and it's showing me the monitor uh, monitor from a different computer. It's just fucking fast remote desktop. So well, there's not a whole lot that can go wrong there. Well, it's the streaming aspect of it. I know you've had issues with, and game reviewers they will be using capture software on it. Yeah. So I mean, in so general, you, like, can, you can use capture software on, uh, like, to just capture the parsec window. It would work really well. No, what I'm saying is, like, you've had issues with it. So yeah, this but, could help but, with that. Relatively minor. And if if you know Ubisoft is partnering with Parsec to to actually put this in uh, in as a corporate solution, then yeah, they, they're going to make sure it works great with all those shit. Which will be awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, other news. Uh, Red Dead Online has some really nasty bugs with the most recent update. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, like you yeah. Can't you can't shoot. Everything is operating like it's in PvP mode with PvP turned off. So your crosshair will literally turn gray. And this even affects like the animals in the game. Like if you're trying to hunt, guess what? Those are those are non-PvP combatants. You cannot shoot the lizard. That Yikes. would suck. Yeah. Uh, like the in the game's been broken for a few weeks now. Um, it's Rockstar is working on it, but they pushed out this patch. It doesn't look like they did any testing. Because they said, well, a few players are having issues, but uh, it's it's over half the player base. Yeah. Half the uh, player so, base? Like, NPCs huge. are gone. Horses are, like, disappearing or invisible. There's, like, this weird invisible, sometimes half ghost man that appears. Uh, turns out it's a not fully loaded NPC. Like, there's <laughs> massive issues. People oh will load God. into the game. Uh, use like a consumable item that you know you can't get back unless you buy it again with real cash. The consumable will get used. The effect will actually work, um, or like you can't turn in a quest or something because you've used that consumable. You'll load back in the game, and yeah, looks like the consumable's gone. You you lost some money, but you never got the effect. Like, they've got massive, massive issues right now. It is quite literally unplayable. Eh, I would say it's a shame, but I think people pretty much bailed on Red Dead Online pretty early. At least on the PlayStation side, I know that a lot of people (laughs) quickly found that there wasn't a whole lot. I think the biggest issue is that it seems like Rockstar bailed on Red Dead Online pretty early, too. And that's what people are having, having problems with. Which is uh, like they, they keep milking the fuck out of GTA 5 and not paying attention to literally anything else. As I say, that was the shocking end of it. It's like GTA 5 is a fucking money printing machine. Yep. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, all right. Anyway, let's get to some good news. Uh, Splunky 2 release date trailer. Um, so the release date of September 15th this year. Uh, yeah, this year. Um, I missed soon. this announcement. That's huge. Splunky's fun as shit. I never beat it though. I love Splunky. Uh, I cannot wait for Splunky 2. I never managed to actually beat it. I might have, I have to. no a, idea what it is. Game. So it's, it. it is a roguelike platformer. Okay. Um, you're going through a um, uh, like a mine shaft, pretty much. And each level is a different mine shaft you have to get to the exit of. And you keep getting deeper and deeper, harder enemies as you go with different shops. You can buy shit like um, boots that have spikes so you can like stick to walls instead of just falling and shit like that. If you're like an Indiana Jones going through Splunky. And it's all it's really uh, randomly generated, isn't it? Oh, yes. yeah. cool. Okay, so cool. Randomly yeah, it's generated it's levels. Like yeah. And nice. usually, game, usually games like that will be run based so you like get as far as you can before you die and then you start over but there are things that you unlock yeah. during those playthroughs that make you know further playthroughs different oh. than the first and like it, there's checkpoints in this game like in a run if you get through like the first four levels you'll get a door that lets you start on the fifth level but the danger is like if you're really good that's fine but you'll be starting the fifth level potentially weaker than you would have normally yeah because right. you don't have all the items from levels one through four so it, interesting. It's a, okay. So Binding of Isaac got a shit ton of love. Splunky also got the same amount, if not more love, by a lot of people in the communities. Yeah. Well, it came out so, before I mean, it, Isaac, didn't it? I don't know. I really don't know what came out first. I'm pretty sure there's some items in Isaac that reference Splunky directly. I wouldn't be shocked. But either way, it's great game. It having a release date is fucking excellent. Um, yeah, pretty excited. Um, sad news: Gorilla Games still working to address the Horizon Zero Dawn PC issues. Whoops, didn't mean to click. Yeah, their their port didn't didn't go over too well, unfortunately. Um, so when when you hold W, Aloy actually doesn't walk in a straight line. Like, it's not, like, bad port issues. It's, like, something is fundamentally broken in Horizon Zero Dawn for mm. PC. Like, like, somebody a... on Reddit made a giant mega thread, and the developer even said, hey, thanks to this person on Reddit who compiled a bug list for us. We're working through it now. Cheesy. Like, if you're holding W yeah. and you're not walking straight, I don't know what in the game would force you not to. Like, uh, I can't it think looks of... like an offset with the, the controls and the camera itself so the controls are actually based on a camera that's not used so mm. that camera is off to the side a little bit from your viewpoint camera okay well what i was getting yeah, at is like it's... i didn't know if there was an actual mechanic in the game that was taking an effect potentially on accident or something but yeah no that... no nothing like that that, that I know sucks anyway. that sucks it's happening it's awesome that they're working on it and i mean it's their, I don't want to say it's their first time because I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's Gorilla's first time being on PC. It's so, still um, like yeah, when, when you're, when you have the money of a, a really successful Sony exclusive, you'd think that, you know, they could pay somebody to take a look and be like, hey, dog, you know that Aloy kind of walks all cockeyed, right? <laughs> like that, that doesn't seem like, like a bug that should just sneak up on you. Yeah, like too much money. Some of the stuff in Skyrim, some of the stuff in Skyrim, I can totally understand. Like, hey, like if you're wearing this thing and you've executed this spell and then a giant hits you at the same time you get attacked by wolves, this thing might happen. Okay, that sounds pretty hard to reproduce. It sounds yeah, like but not, it... you know, something you're not going to run into in every, every corner of the game. But hey, man, when I press W, you know, she doesn't walk straight, right? <laughs> I don't think that's every player though, because like review none of the reviewers called that out. Reviewers would have fucking destroyed it for that. Yeah. So it can't be that everyone's getting that. It can't be that's universal. True. It's it's enough. But it's enough that... to make the news articles, right? No, yeah, I get it. But I'm saying, yeah. like, because it's not universal, we don't know necessarily like the criteria that's making this happen. Oh yeah, of course not. But it's a shame because 
you know, another previously PlayStation exclusive that got the PC port, Death Stranding, uh, is lauded for its really, you know, fantastic port to PC. Um, yeah, it's, it it's a great. shame that one of the the PlayStation's other, you know, big hitter AAA titles is is having trouble in the PC department because that's a lot of people's only access to experience that game. And for yeah. that to be a, a buggy experience, you know, really soils the game as a whole for people that didn't play it on PlayStation. I, I know I've got a PS4, but I was actually going to buy Horizon Zero Dawn on PC mm-hmm. just because I I never play my PlayStation. I'm always sitting here at my desk. So, uh, And then I, I read the reviews about the port and dove into the Reddit threads, and I'm, I'm good buying this on sale after a couple months. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't need it right now. Let them sort it out. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you've already waited a couple years. Let's wait in a couple weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, uh, they're still working on that. Uh, last bit of news. Assassin's Creed creative director fired from Ubisoft and following investigation into misconduct. You seems, mean like the, uh, it seems like every house cleaning. Yeah, seems like every, every week. Every week we have another yeah. segment. All right, uh, Ubisoft fired the VP. Oh, now it's this guy, and next week it'll be another guy. Yeah. Also, That's, we did uh, this to ourselves again. Next time we have one yeah, of these, let's did. not have it as the last news item. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Hey, no, it's hey, we could spend this. This is a good thing. Ubisoft is doing the right thing. They're cleaning house. They're listening to victims. They're not taking any bullshit. Good on Ubisoft for doing the right thing true let's move on and by that i mean (laughs) anyone have anything else i think Uh, we're exhausted on the list trying to think if we missed something oh i got new controllers for for my index Uh, so because i've got such a bad fucking deal with smashing my controllers together in beat saber i decided to cut out the middleman and now i've got beat saber specific smashing controllers hey uh nice. and then i've got my everything nice. else controllers which is really nice nice sweet yeah they they got here they arrived in a nice package sent them up with trivial it's really not much to say because it was such a normal boring experience it was great <laughs> okay, Scott does call out one thing uh, we don't have on the news. Um, I think it's worth calling out. Modern Warfare has had an issue with skins that are that it's uh, kind of crashing games, and it's been in existence for over a week now, and they haven't patched it to fix it. Ooh, that's I guess rough. it's really nasty like, bug that's causing crashes, all based off of skins. Oh, Rocket League had something like that that one time. Remember when it would tank everybody's frame rate when somebody used a certain boost? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. That was awful. Yeah, that's so not guess... good for COD because that game's already hard to... In Any type of interference like that would crash a game. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah that... That's not and good. And it's a, such a weird thing, but... Yeah, so that's still ongoing. Maybe they don't like... know how to fix it if it's taking I mean, a week. At this point, I would yeah. say just undo everything you did to get that into the game. Yeah. Like I, I understand that well, they, don't, they don't want to do that, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, like you know, that's that's money well, out of the let's, pocket. Let's so remove yeah. the only monetization we have, other than yeah. the, the price <laughs> of the game initially. That is a yikes, man. They're, so let's remove the monetization, especially now that the monetization. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, because it's you know it's not the hot new title anymore. It's been <laughs> out for a while. A lot of people already have Dina's. the game. <laughs> Hey, well, yep. it's the messenger calling out my my biggest issue with the the new COD, and one of the big reasons why I haven't bought it. Uh, it's because it they're going to make everybody re-download the seventeen terabytes that game takes up. You've got to have a fucking SAN, a petabyte scale SAN, to install modern fucking warfare. True. I hear a lot yeah, of people could... complain every time the game updates. It's like a thirty gig update, like. Why does it have to be? That's absurd. I mean, you can just buy Warzone. You don't have to buy the whole yeah. game. Yeah. And Warzone's free. And it's not as big. It's still big for a battle royale. Yeah. But uh, it's not going to be 70 terabytes. <laughs> Most people so own the, the game. The last I heard, the actual size, and, you know, to 
to make sure I'm not um, uh, exaggerating too much. Uh, it's like 250, I think. That's 250 that's, gigs. That's monstrous. That's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> that is fucking stupid. Yeah, like you don't have to pack 4K with everyone. I'm, I hope to God they have 4K textures in that shit. Like, and that's why just, that just make it make, make it, it an optional, optional DLC. That's what uh, that's what Rainbow that's what Six Siege. Do. That's what yeah, that's what Rainbow Six Siege did. And I'm sure other games too. You have yeah. the regular texture pack. Like, I don't... If you want 4K textures, you have that nice 4K monitor. You know, download this free DLC. Opt into the larger There's another file. hundred gigs. Yes. Yep. All right. Well, fellas, um, one final pass. Anything else? Because yeah. if not, it's nope. rundown check, time. Check out Jake from Safe Farm on YouTube. A oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that one. <laughs> yeah, but do it anyway. So, oh, okay. We'll do it now. We'll do it later. <laughs> You're going to hear a lot about it in five seconds, too. <laughs> um, so, for those of you on Twitch, we got a YouTube 72 pin connector. You can always go find our old podcast that you may have missed. The stuff we're clipping out of these because no one wants to watch two hour podcasts all the time. So, we have all of our little bite sized chunk nuggets over there as well as all of our top play montages for the last year and however many months we've been doing it. If you're over at YouTube, thank you for checking out the shit. But we're live every Saturday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can always jump over here, jump in the games with us, snipe us, be part of the conversation in the chat. It's a really good time. Um, also, we have a Twitter. We try to update more and more random stuff around RLCS, other random games, how the team's doing. But you can find us on Twitter at 72 pc underscore official and then finally we just said a lot of shit you may not want to remember all that just go to 72 pinconnector.com you'll find all the shit there all the links send you everywhere but that's not all we also have jake from state farm with us you, everyone should go check out his fucking youtube jake from state farm spell he is the only strand type youtuber <laughs> shut up tom <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand that completely, but it's funny. <laughs> He's got some Rocket League content there, Valorant content there, some kind of variety stuff there with some of the Fall Guy videos. But he's also going to have 72 pin connector gameplay with commentary over there starting tomorrow. So go check that starting shit Monday. out. Starting Monday. Shit, video video Monday. will be up Monday at noon, Tuesday at noon, Wednesday at noon for nice. days one, two, and three. Thank awesome. you. Why noon, you uh, noon Central. That matters. Yeah, that matters. So, with that being the rundown, Jake, anything else you want to plug while you were here? No, sir. Thank you for having me. Appreciate thanks it. For, right. Thanks for joining thanks for us. On. That was fun. Indeed. All right. So, I think that's all we got. All right. Till next week. See you, everybody. Game on. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>